Reading is one of the best ways to learn anything, and it is also the best way to become the best version of yourself. Today, I'm here to discuss several of my favorite books that helped me achieve my goals and dreams and share some of the stories with you. Hopefully, one of you will try just one of these books. In this channel, I always encourage reading because books were my guide and the reason why I became successful. Books can always be a medium for you to get close to people you admire and get some of their ideas and thoughts. By sharing some of these books, hopefully it'll give you the seeds of inspiration for your own personal goals and dreams as they did mine. Without further ado, let's get into some of my top books that helped me throughout my career and my life. The first is The Four Disciplines of Execution by Chris McChesney, Sean Covey, and Jim Pooling. This book helped me focus on prioritizing my most important goals in life. I started several businesses in my life and some of them were successful and some of them weren't. But the one thing I never held back on was executing on ideas. Now that doesn't mean that you in turn don't get executed sometimes or your business, so to speak. Now that doesn't mean that you're always gonna be successful, but it's finding an idea and then really drawing down on things that keep people from growing. How many times have you encountered someone, your friends, your family, your relatives, that wanted to start the next venture and they always have ideas and they're smart and they're creative, but they never execute. This book teaches you the four disciplines to reach your goals. First one, focus on your wildly important goal, or WIG in short. This discipline focuses on prioritizing and narrowing down your most important goals in life. By narrowing down on the most important goals, you become less distracted, so you can focus in more on your dream. Focusing less equals you'll accomplish more. See, oftentimes we get people that wanna accomplish everything. They want to be the greatest this and the greatest that, and they want the most this and the most that, and that's how we start to fall victim to having too many choices. So when you start to focus in on your most important goals, you'll start to see that new ideas start to blossom in those arenas. Now, what you need to do is identify your wig. You can ask these three simple questions. Where are you now? Where do you want to be? And by when do you want to achieve the goal? Now, oftentimes I'll write something down and it could be a crazy you know, time, like in you know, six months I wanna achieve all of this. I often find that if you focus all your energy, it's possible. But when you've got too many things going on at the same time, Time, that six months can easily turn into six years. And I know that I've been putting off certain things for a long time and it's because I lacked focus in my early years to get to my most important goals. The other thing that it does is sometimes you might think, hey, it's nice to have this or it's nice to have this or achieve that goal. And once you start writing things down and answer those three questions, sometimes things will fall off of your list as well. The second discipline is act on lead measures. This book tells us that success can be measured by our lag and lead measures. Lags are the results of things that you've done, such as quality, profit, customer satisfaction. Leads are actions that predict the lag measures. These are your day-to-day -day activities to reach your goal. Discipline three is keeping a compelling scoreboard. That's also called a discipline of engagement. When you're keeping a compelling score about yourself and your team, you're able to measure if you're winning or losing your goals. The fourth discipline, to create a cadence of accountability. This discipline advises that you have a regular and frequent meeting with your wildly important goal so that it can be measured by asking questions like, did I meet last week's commitment? Did I move the scoreboard? How much more committed I'm going to be this week? The other book that I love is Measure What Matters, written by John Doers. This book promotes the objective and key results method, or OKR. In short, the first OKR tells us that you should pick objectives because it's hard. Doer is telling us that we have to have big audacious goals with our dreams so that we can exert the maximum amount of effort to reach them. And even if they don't come true, since you exerted so much effort to reach this impossible goal, the result could be excellent. Because of your extreme effort, you've probably grown exponentially. It's kind of like that old adage, you know, if you miss the moon or miss the sun, you land up in the stars, however that one goes. What's important is that the moon the more hard work you put into your goals, the better it is. Sometimes, you know, I've started businesses where they crashed and burned and I ended up spending a lot of money on a venture, but I learned from it. So I started out a digital magazine, for example, and it didn't do well. But what I learned from there helped me set up another digital company later. So I tried extremely hard to get this up and running, spent a lot of money, got the right resources, the best teams that I could possibly pay for, but it still didn't do well. And I was able to learn about how and why it didn't scale and why it wasn't successful successful and then applied it to something else. So always understand the higher you want to reach and stretch, the better your circumstances can be, even if you miserably fail sometimes. The second OKR is quality, quantity, and key results. Doer advises that people should mix quantitative and qualitative results to gauge if they're getting their goals on time. 
The third OKR is color coding check-ins. Door says that if you can check weekly, monthly, quarterly goals by color coding them and scoring them each by one to 10, green means 70 to 100% meeting the target. Note, if you're always 100%, that means your goals are too low. If that happens, adjust the challenges or the goals to something more complex. Next would be the yellow, or 30 to 70%. You would wanna mix yellow and green for your check-ins. And in that way, when you're in the yellow, you know that you're handling your goals well without failing. But at the same time, you see that you will need improvement if you wanna to get to the green section. And when you're in the green, that means you've achieved your goals and then it's time to make another level. Or you're making this too easy for yourself. Red is zero to 30%. This is what you should always avoid because it means that you're simply failing. When this happens, you need to develop a recovery plan to get back to the yellow or the green. Remember, this doesn't happen instantly. So be nice to yourself because Doer says goals are servants to our purpose. Next, we have one of my all-time favorites, Atomic Habits by James Clear. This book taught me how the little changes we make in life could make significant impact. Now, I always believe in incremental change. So if you want to run a marathon, you can't just start running 20 miles a day. Start by walking if you haven't walked in a little bit. Start with little changes and when you look back if you're making incremental changes along the way you'll be shocked at how far you've come at something this book taught me that changing our daily routines can help us reach bigger goals it only takes one percent of your power to make life-changing results james clear says habits are the compound interest of self-improvement let's say you want clean dishes but you decide to follow your laziness each day and just think about doing it later you're adding one dish a day and the next thing you know you have stacks of dishes waiting to get clean if you make one small lousy decision decision each day. Would you slowly decline? Would it turn into a bigger problem later? Absolutely, it can. And it does. Most of the time, this is how we treat our life. Those dishes start to stack up. But if you only do 1% of a good thing every day, such as washing the dish or taking one day at a time to eventually reach your goals, you'll train yourself to good habits. Each day, you increase your effort and you clear up a dish or two. To quote James Clear, putting few steps towards good behavior and more steps away from bad behavior Encourage yourself to take small steps to reach your goals. It will take you time, but it will definitely happen. It's like smoking cigarettes. You've been smoking two packs. You can't just quit tomorrow. Start by taking a half a cigarette a day or a whole cigarette a day. And before you know it, look back and you've stopped smoking. Look, learning is a process and that's why I teach what I know. So if you like this type of content, go ahead and apply a little bit of liberal pressure to that like and subscribe button and let me and the algorithm know that this content is valuable to you. And I'll continue to bring you content like this every single week. And eventually we'll reach our subscriber goals together. You Can't Hurt Me is the other book that's special to me. This man, David Goggins, who wrote You Can't Hurt Me is probably one of the toughest people on planet Earth when it comes to mental capacity. He's the only person who's completed training for the Navy SEALs, the US Army, and the US Air Force. And believe me, I know how tough all of those can be. He's kind enough to share with us how he became so successful in his book, You Can't Hurt Me. Goggins shared the importance of having a calloused mind. When Goggins was training, he developed calluses in his palms that protected him from pain. These calloused hands apply the same principle to your brain to develop calluses in your brain. Metaphorically, to develop calluses in the brain, you need to crave discomfort and master your fear of pain. He tells us that when you fear the experience of pain, that fear grows. But if you let that pain come into your life, it becomes bearable and then shrinks. Goggins also encouraged us to remember the 40% rule and the cookie jar. He shares that when your mind tells you that you're done and completely exhausted, remember, you only used 40% of your effort. Push yourself to the limit and tap into that reserve of energy that you have. And you can also open a cookie jar or memories of you when you struggled hard by remembering victorious moments in your life and believing that you have more in your tank. So you end up encouraging yourself and your mind so that you can actually finish the task in hand because you've got those memories of your victory. That's why Goggins said, if you want to master your mind, you have to become addicted to hard work. Goggins has my kind of mindset. You know, he's former military and he goes above and beyond and he came from a troubled past as well. You know, it's nice to see and it's refreshing to see people that represent other communities in this country that come together and can teach people. Me coming from the project, knowing I didn't have any role models, going through the military was one of those escapes for me to ex finally escape the environment that I came from. And if utilized the right way, discipline can be taught to anyone. Goggins goes above and beyond to show examples in his daily life, you know, running at 3.30 in the morning or doing an ultra marathon. You don't have to go to those extremes to learn how to discipline your life, your mind, your actions, and your habits. 
The next book, Marshall Goldsmith's Triggers, Creating Behaviors That Last. This person emphasizes how important it is for you to change your environment, to become the person that you want to be. See, your environment dictates your behavior. Adopt the belief that there are triggers for us to help us in our own behavior. Number one, eliminate triggers. Identify what the triggers are first and eliminate which ones you can control. Second is to anticipate triggers. Always anticipate and mentally prepare for triggers that you can't eliminate. So at least you can caution against any blows that will affect your mood. By preparing yourself ahead of time, you'll be able to see how you're going to react. For example, let's say you're on a diet and you get invited to a party that you're going to be around pizza. It's a pizza party. And you know you can't eat that pizza. You need to go ahead and think about those things even before you go. You know that it's a trigger. You know you like eating these type of carbs. You know you like pizza. You need to prepare yourself that it's going to be a trigger that you can't avoid. The next one is to actually create triggers. Surround yourself with productive triggers so you won't be overwhelmed by them. Strategically place objects throughout your environment and remember to multiply your digital reminders so that you don't forget your goals. Surround yourself with people who promote and praise the behavior you're striving for. Positive reinforcement always helps. In my sales organizations, we consistently congratulate each other when we get listings or close business. And that always helps trigger that behavior of, okay, let me go out there and generate more leads because this is a behavior that makes me feel good in front of a group. Goldsmith also shows here how you can use active questioning to see if you're getting closer to your goal. Always ask yourself if you did your best and add an active question to it. Did I do my best to work out even if I was tired? Did I do my best to help everyone at work? With each question, score one of them from one to 10. Goldsmith claims that you get a better picture of yourself and your goals when you consistently evaluate yourself with accountability. What's great about this is that if you continuously see low scores, you'll drive yourself to improve on them. And if you see consistently excellent scores each day, you'll strive to maintain those habits. These books are are some of the few that have helped me shape my life and achieve my goals. I hope you enjoyed this video and I encourage you to check out at least one of these books and then put it into application. And I'll give you more videos like this on my favorite books to come. I hope that I've encouraged you enough for you to hit that like and subscribe button and if you've enjoyed this content. By the way, we have something new and exciting for you. I'm going to be doing a weekly newsletter that I'm planning as well as a free ebook. So go ahead and click the link down below and be added to our list of people that are waiting for the free ebook as well as our newsletter. You'll get advanced financial strategies so that you can have not only financial literacy and understand what you're investing in, but you'll be more informed and greater suited to grow your wealth. If you enjoyed this video and want more videos like this, I made one about the benefits of saving money for the future. Go ahead and hit this video now.